We get our first look at the new look Longhorns here from DKR Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. In practice, spring practice, they have been raving about his improvements. And we've seen that with Quinn, but Arch doesn't just bring to the table his last name. He brings an incredible arsenal. This is the most talented quarterback room of arm talent Texas has ever had on campus. Malik Murphy, you see him there with the dreads. Jonathan Brooks, they love his explosiveness. The guy averaged, I believe, 6.6 .6 yards per carry last year. Savion Red coming in, a former wide receiver, converting to running back. Keelan Robinson, they love his versatility. Jadon Blue is a physical specimen out there. And of course, CJ Baxter that you mentioned coming in the high school phenom. All of these guys have something that the coaches love about them. That's why they're here. But who's gonna be the one that puts his stamp on this running attack and takes over during the year? And the 2023 spring game is underway. They will start off at the 30-yard line after this return. Jaden Blue. And here we go. Quinn Ewers, as we said, new haircut, new everything. Steve Sarkeesian told us this week that of their 14 spring practices, he looked absolutely fantastic in 12 of those. Yeah, and, and he said that Quinn is on a different level than the other quarterbacks right now because he's been here for a year. He's been in the system, and he has that game-playing experience. When you talk to offensive coordinator Kyle Flood, his main point was you go from, hey, what is my job to how do I do my job, and Quinn has been amazing this spring with his decision-making. Jaden Blue beside him in the backfield, the sophomore out of Houston. 15 carries last year for 33 yards. Ewers to his left. That one off the fingertips. Worthy in motion. And they go to the new number one, switched his jersey in the offseason. Was a two-yard loss after the Jaron Thompson tackle. Ewers quickly gets it out, and again, in and out of the hands of Sanders. Ewers had to hurry that one. And right now, it seems like the offense is just a little sluggish. That's been a common theme for them this spring. The defense has been ahead of them. It's Charlie Ferris with the punt. Those guys have to show up and show those young guys this is how it's done. Here is one of those young guys, Malik Murphy, finally healthy. Missed the first three practices of the spring after having a setback with his foot. The handoff to new running back Savion Red, converted wide receiver. Hey, he's a Debo Samuel type of guy, can play wide out, can run the ball, extremely aggressive. I'd like to see what he can do today as the true running back. There he is again. Murphy dumps it off to him. Yeah, I know that guy, Cal Shannon. It's crazy. Pretty familiar with that, man. Yeah. Third and five, Malik Murphy. Over the middle, that one dropped. DeAndre Moore, the freshman. Number 14 wide receiver coming out of high school. Ball out of the air. Nice job by the DB there getting the ball out. And coach wanted a clean game. A couple of drops early on, but that's all right. And to not really have all those expectations that he had on him last year after he played so well early in that Alabama game. But hey, this is the price of doing business at the quarterback position in college football. Here's the highly touted freshman running back, C.J. Baxter, trying to create some running room there. C4 explosive out of the backfield. ESPN's number three running back coming out of Orlando, Florida. It is tough to step into the shoes of not only Bijan, but Roshan as well. But he is the heavily hyped freshman taking over in the backfield. Yeah, and I saw what you did there. The C4 being explosive. That the is hey, man, that's right game. down my alley. I like that. I like that reference. Trying to live up to it. Three yard gain. Whittington open in the flat. Jordan Whittington, coaches say he is having an absolutely great spring. And with those guys that they have on the outside now, man, Jordan Wilkes is going to eat up the middle of the field. Absolutely. Had 50 catches last year, more than his previous three seasons combined. That one hauled in by A.D. Mitchell, the transfer out of Georgia, tallest receiver on the team. Fans were really excited when he hit the portal and made his way to Austin. Yeah, all six foot four of them right there. You see him with the green jersey. A.D. Mitchell, man. This guy is a touchdown scoring machine. Feels like every time he caught a ball there at Georgia, especially in the, in the college football playoffs, that he was putting six on the board. At the big go-ahead touchdown against Ohio State in that semifinal. There's the give up the middle to Baxter. But he certainly has a talent to be a special back. Play action fake. Ewers 
just throws it away. Making these backs all understand that we're in this together. But what he's telling CJ is, go be CJ Baxter. Don't try to be B. John Robinson. On third and seven, that one on the money and hauled in by A.D. Mitchell. Like you said, a big target. It was limited earlier this spring, coming off an ankle injury. I was telling my receivers, man, you better get up, because I'm throwing that ball. I need you to catch it. <laughs> Even in the spring game, Ewers going deep down the field. Worthy hangs on and steps out of bounds inside the 10. On the throw, see what you see him kind of shift over a little bit, throws it up for Xavier Worthy, and my man. Steve Sarkeesian said, listen, that is an absolute focus this offseason. If we don't have the deep ball working, we're out of sync. Jaden Blue takes it down inside the two. Uh, in the past couple of years that he needs to work on, but if he can do that consistently down the field, man, this offense is going to be explosive. Lake's still moving, and Jaden Blue stopped at the goal line. Baxter, one of the biggest freshman running backs in the nation, coming out of high school, trying to punch it in, stacked up. Jet Bush was there, and it'll be fourth and goal. In the back before he could get his forward momentum going, awesome job. Baxter again, and this time he's in. The freshman with the first score of the spring game for the White Squad. So you're going to see C.J. Baxter get it, just go right downhill. Hey, safety shows up in the hole. C.J. Baxter's is a big back, coming in at 215 pounds. And you know in a spring game, they're not going to kick a field goal in that situation. you got to trust your offensive line. And the young freshman, let them know that they were right. Nice opener closed. It worked. On for the extra point is Burt Auburn. And it's a 7-0 white squad lead here early in the spring game. Every Texas fan knows this. That was his guy. He went to often targeted worthy 114 times last year. 40 more targets than any other receiver on the team. Auburn kick and the play blown dead Savion Red will start off at the 30. Well if you hear the buzz coming out of the crowd right now on the stadium here he is Arch Manning taking over the highest rated quarterback ever to sign with a Big 12 school in the ESPN 300 era. The crowd is loving it. Looking to his left. And his first pass is complete. Thatcher Milton with the grab. From a young freshman. We asked Steve Sarkeesian this week. Obviously, we know the pressure on him, the spotlight on him. As he rolls to his right. That one batted away. Stark said he does not want Arch Manning to come to Texas and work college football. He wants him to play college football. Enjoy it, man. Has to throw that one away. That's uh Arch brings to the table is his ability to move outside of the pocket. I'm not saying he's Lamar Jackson, but he's not your stationary quarterback who's just going to stay in the pocket. Coming out of high school as far as reading coverages and the mental aspect of the game. So back to the white squad. Quinn Ewers hooking up with Worthy again. Yeah, and the coaches are really excited about Isaiah Nayer. He had a huge grab in the spring game a year ago, put up big numbers at Wyoming. I think the fact that they're taking it slow with him right now is in his best interest. As you see, Quinn just a little bit outside trying to throw that nonstop or maybe even a back shoulder to Xavier Worthy. I put my foot in the ground and, and turn up field. Am I going to be able to go celebrate in the end zone because I scored a touchdown and not be hurt again? Final play of the first quarter, that one thrown into coverage. Dangerous play, Marshall Landwehr was there in the middle defensively. And that's the end of the first quarter in Austin. C.J. Baxter with the lone touchdown. White squad up 7-0 in the spring game. It was more of a last year decision type of throw. He's trusting his arm to make it and fire it in there, but he's got to be able to see the coverage. Here's the toss from Malik Murphy to Jonte Cook who's tied with Xavier Worthy as the highest rated wide receiver signee ever to sign with Texas in the history of the ESPN 300 era. They said he's kind of like a thicker version of Xavier Worthy. A thicker version of Xavier Worthy. Like Xavier Worthy is like, what, 160 pounds soaking wet? Soaking wet. So it's not that much harder to be thicker than Xavier Worthy, but John T. <laughs> Cook, you know, he's got some, some skills as well. There's the dump off to Kai Woods, cuts back towards the middle, and finally brought down. Yeah, just a little rail route out the backfield, avoids the rush. Nice catch, and I love the finish. Don't run out of bounds. Don't put your foot in the ground and go back vertical. 
As Ty Murphy, that dart over to DeAndre Morris. He trusted a little too much, gets himself into trouble, but not there. Yeah, the ballsmanship to fake out the defense, and then look at that dart. I feel sorry for his hands, man. I know them things is on fire right now. Here's the give up the middle. Woods evading defenders. Didn't play last year. Three-time All-District in high school. Making some plays here in the spring game. Yeah, showing a little spark right there. Second and four from the Orange squad. Again, they go to Woods up the middle. They trying to get that defensive line tired out by running the ball constantly at them. Woods again up the middle. Sark brought that up. He goes, listen, it's going to be one of the hottest days of the year so far. We want to see who's out of shape and who's ready to go. And that's without eating breakfast, so you know they're huffing and puffing right now. Fourth and one here, Savion Red spinning off a number of defenders, fighting for yards. They're trying to push him forward. He's a tough dude to tackle, tough to bring down. And he gives the Orange squad a first down. They go back to Red. And wrapped up. You know, a phrase, not really putting his head down, but not be afraid of contact. That's a huge part of this game. This time he cuts out wide to the near sidelines. Replaced in the backfield by Kai Woods. Third and three. And they give it to the sophomore, brought down immediately by Sadir Mitchell, who's the highest rated out of state defensive line signee in the ESPN 300 era. A couple of tackles on this drive. Now, I know everyone watching this game, they know this roster, they know these recruits, but it's a com common theme. Highest rated this, highest rated that. But these guys are coming in and they're adding to a roster that's already extremely talented. And I think it's been quite some time since Texas football has felt that way. You're building depth with some of these signings. And these guys are going to be able to contribute come fall. I mean, I'm telling you, man, the Big 12 championship is clearly in the view of this football team. Will Stone on for the field goal attempt and it is good so the orange squad on the board with just over nine to play in the first half here in austin play action fake finds a cutting ad mitchell three catches already off of that rpo got the ball out so quick just showing off the the arm angles that he can make easily without getting his feet set Third and one, Sanders in motion. Baxter, all oh, great move, cutting to the inside, and then finally brought down by Jet Bush. Picks up the first down. Baxter, ride the wave here. He rides the wave, then he bounces outside. Ooh, stick your foot in the ground, get vertical. Make that guy have to tackle you. Put the moves on the fellow freshman, Malik Muhammad. First and 10, Ewer steps up in the pocket. to give up the middle because we were coming off a five and seven season everyone was counting us out and he made it his mission to kind of carry that defense at times a year ago here's a throw to jordan whittington with a big gain on third and long it's the ability to get there at the right time he's doing it jade blue getting this program to the heights that it should be at as opposed to getting himself to where he thinks he should be blue with some moves up the middle and I think that's what he's focused on. They want to do big things here at Texas, and he's doing it the right way. Yeah, Ford, a huge part of that. Less than five to play in the first half. Blue with plenty of running room, sprinting through the defense. Oh, a oh. number of defenders, and Jaden Blue is in for the touchdown. Look at this. Jaden Blue, little counter action, gets out into the open field. And what I love most is the foot speed, and then oh, look at that. Made that man do the cha-cha in the middle. Oh my goodness. Talk about Jaden Blue, more like Jaden Black and Blue, because he's beating up the defense. When you put five dogs in the backfield at running back, these guys are all going to come out and compete. So you see him see him get skinny, and then he's just not afraid to, oh, look at that. That looked like Reggie Bush on the sideline making defenders miss, and he's doing that in the middle of the field. Saw Keelan Robinson sitting this one out on the sideline. Here's Arch Manning back in the game. Freshman stepping up in the pocket. You said he can move and picks up a gain on the ground. Six-yard gain to be exact. He's one for three through the air so far. And the gift to Kai Woods flying through the defense. Well, seven-yard gain. Arch fires it out to his left. Bobbled and ultimately dropped by Kai Woods. But the throw is on the money. But that offensive line is winning the battle right now. 
Final three and a half minutes of the first half. Arch under pressure, throws it away. It, ap it appears our communications are being fried on the field right now after this so hot. There you go. Quinn Ewers, the endless puns, I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, look at Jay Witt, Jordan Whittington finally dragged down by B.J. Allen. Just another nice job of Quinn Ewers dropping back, very, very calm, throws it to his check down, and Jay Witt says, you better bring the whole defense when you try to tackle me. He don't care whether you're on his team or not. He loves hitting. I mean, he lives for that. He said... Is that one off target? Yak Monsters and Jordan Whittington is one of those. Of course, had that huge state championship game running through 334 yards. Let's see if they get JT Sanders involved here. Moors had a hold of his jersey. He can run at times. It steps out of bounds. But more times than not, it doesn't really work out that way. So these defensive players have to go out there and actually try to finish on the quarterback without hurting him. Worthy cutting back to the outside, outrunning Terrence Brooks it finally pounds. But watch this mm. little inside under route sets him up, and then he says, Hey man, I got power too. Mm. Worthy, I pack a punch, baby. 27 yard game, a little bit of trickery here for Texas. Worthy with the throw downfield, making sure he understands that in that situation, you make the catch, you take one for the team. I'm glad we don't have Sark mic'd up for that because. And a few words you can repeat on the air. Jordan Whittington with the first down. CJ Baxter in the backfield now next to Quinn Ewers. Quick throw out to Whittington. Brought down just inside the 15. It's going to turn into a reality for these football players and the schools to keep them in school. Ewers over the middle, and that one hauled in by A.D. Mitchell. What a first half for the Georgia transfer. Look at this, Quinn Ewers, super simple drop, makes a throw over the middle, and A.D. Mitchell says, why use two when I only need one? You talk about a touchdown scoring machine, this guy. It's 6'4", four, four catches for 42 yards and a score. Dude, watch this, the high point, ha <laughs> ha, didn't even need the other hand to help secure it. Then he had to look on his face on the sideline saying, I'm him, A.D. Mitchell, putting on the show today. Austin Jordan, the DB coming off the edge in a green jersey, kind of tapped him up, but they didn't count it as a tackle. Some of these things are a little quirky about the spring game, but it's still good to see Savion Red out in the open field, making plays, giving himself confidence. When you have these many fans and the excitement of the game, it kind of can make you get tired a little bit faster. Pressure coming in by Anthony Hill. Arch stepping out of bounds. It's hot. That black turf makes the heat even more unbearable for the players. Arch in third and long, stepping up. We've seen him run now a few times. I've seen him run more today than I ever saw Eli or Peyton running their entire careers in the NFL. Arch officially with three carries for 15 yards. Steps up, runs into a teammate, Savion Red, out and flat. And you could see the look on his face disappointed. Again, Sark said he's his own worst critic. He said at times he's too tough on himself, too workmanlike. Sark will joke with him at times throughout practice. Very businessman like businessman-like freshman. Even if he ends up being the third stringer, everybody's going to be keeping their eye on him until the time he leaves the field. You know, you're 100% right there about Arch, but it's a part of your growing process as a college quarterback. Viewers. Off the fingertips of the defender. He's been a guy that has created some buzz. He's making plays, and that tip right there is probably one of them. Ewers going deep down the near side again, targeting Worthy. Incomplete, no flag on Terrence Brooks. How's your tennis game, Alex? Awful. <laughs> and you? Mine's not bad. You got Malik Murphy back here in the game. Taking a shot. Going deep. Has a man. Freshman. Oh my goodness. Oof. Oh my goodness. Early enrollee freshman. These are the type of moments that you, you beg for in your first spring game. Wide open down the field. Good chance he's going to catch this and waltz into the end zone. Just got to look it in, man. Got to look it in there. Top 15 rated wide receiver in the nation, according to ESPN. So it's second and 10 again. Murphy heaving it down the field. This time it's caught by John T. Cook, and he's off to the races. Touchdown. 
79 yards for the score. Oh, my goodness. They didn't have to show the zoom up of Johnson right there who was covering him. But right here, Malik Murphy said, why not try it again? I got some juice in this arm. And Jontae Cook cooked that man in front of everybody hibachi style and ran all the way for the touchdown. And Malik Murphy, two deep balls on the money. One was caught. That one looked like a backwards pass. Worthy recovers it in time. This is the most talent Texas has had in the quarterback room ever. You were stepping up, and they will blow that play dead. Well, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to get in the booth and get this thing going. Ewers oh. firing one on third and long. I was able to throw the ball from the pocket, throw 300, 400 yards in games, and I think that's the kind of progression I would love to see from some of these guys, not just come in as a finished product straight out of high school. There is Arch completing one because of how you start your career, it's how you finish your career that really matters. It was Quint Merritt there with the reception. They go back to Savion Red. You can see barreling over a defender. Bring up Anthony Hill, number zero. This guy, the players have been raving about him, the coaches have been raving about him, and his ability to rush the passer, which we talked about earlier, is a major key and a major focus for this defense. They want to find ways to get Anthony Hill to pat, rush the passer and not just be an off the ball linebacker. He'll be ruled a sack. And guess what? Anthony Hill. Right on cue. Anthony Hill from his middle linebacker position right there. Easy pass rush. Just brushes by the running back, Savion Red. That's one aspect that we also talked about off air. Sometimes the ball just finds certain defenders and Anthony Hill is a guy who has a nose for the football. Texas has a couple of those guys that can come in on both sides of the ball and do that. Final seconds of the quarter, Arch to his right. Big hit delivered to break up the pass. Moore a little bit slow getting up. Arch Manning stares down his receiver and toes him into a mouthful of hurt. <laughs> the one and only Colt McCoy joining us here in the final quarter of the spring game, Malik Murphy. Seven of nine, now eight of ten. All right, Alex, we got to call it what it is. Malik Murphy looks really good. Absolutely. He, he looks phenomenal. He's making the simple plays. He's making the big throws down the field. I think, you know, at the end of the day, this is an open competition uh, for the quarterback spot, whether it be the one spot or the two spot. Quinn Ewers looks phenomenal. Malik Murphy has come out and put on a show today. And Arch Manning, you've seen the glimpses of what he can be, and you've seen the mobility. I'm just beyond impressed with what Malik Murphy has done today to show the fans, hey, don't forget about me. He's a great. He's hanging in there in the pocket, finds his receiver. Now 9 of 11. And this is a guy who's had some bad luck with injuries coming out of high school. The ankle had a setback with his foot earlier this spring. When he really hadn't played any college football with Ohio State, didn't throw a pass. And Steve Sarkeesian told us, it's first and goal for Murphy. Hands it off. No, play action fake. Come out, make the easy plays, look comfortable out here. And we have all different sides of this. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Did he just try to double pass that? Well, he does everything else. <laughs> else, he's played wide receiver, running back, intended for gutter help. I don't think I've ever seen a double pass try to get completed while three guys are trying to tackle you. You have the astronomical expectations for Arch Manning that are going to always be there. And for Malik Murphy, Unless you knew him in a root form that some people might have forgotten about him. And he's managed that as well. And he's going to uh, excuse me, with 369 passing yards, completing nearly 70% of those passes. Murphy into the end zone. Wow. On fourth and goal. Unable to hang on to it. 166 yards through the air and a touchdown. Charles Wright now takes over with a handoff out of his own end zone. C.J. Baxter, a little bit gimpy here. Uh -oh. He will hobble off the field. Again, Steve Sarkisian said the goal is to play clean football, injury-free, not many penalties. These guys have been limited all spring. When they come back out in fall camp and getting ready for the season, this running back room is going to be that much more explosive. Oh, and missing this game as well, Charles Wright. A.D. Mitchell. 
Five catches now for the Georgia transfer, Mitchell. Yeah, you can tell that Sark and, and, and Kyle Flood love A.D. Mitchell. They're constantly featuring him in these play calls, giving him these easy catches. Xavier Worthy, I mean, they're four or five deep, and they still got a bunch of young guys that are going to be making plays for them as well. Right, with a man in his face somehow got that off to who else? Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell's just a guy that you say, all right, watch our guy right here, Charles Wright, make the throw with the guy in his face. It's a little bit behind A.D. Mitchell, but because he's such a big body guy, he just has easy body control. Flips his hips, make the catch. Right, even it downfield. Past his intended target, Xavier Worthy, who's still in there. Final three and a half of the spring game. There's the handoff to Colin Page, the Austin native, the sophomore, played at Anderson High. We absolutely have to play this guy. He can make plays too. Ooh. Right. Escape ability. For Quinn, what I love most is we've seen those big explosive plays from him last year, but we saw the simple plays today, the check down throws, the getting through his progressions and making the easy throws. We saw the screens that Sark called up for him. Steve Sarkeesian. Manning rotating the final few plays at quarterback with Cole Lord. And they'll call that one a sack. Man. Austin Jordan, sophomore in there. It's a, it's a learning curve when you come to college football, especially as a, as a high school guy, essentially. Um, the, the rush is going to get to you faster. This is an all-star team of all the best teams in your district. And sometimes getting too up to speed with that can take a, a little bit of time. And I think Arch is dealing with a little bit of that right now. But if I was him, I would not be discouraged by what is going on on the field right now. Stepping up in the pocket will be ruled another sack. Can tackle him to the ground or really even touch him. But you have to be encouraged from what you've seen. Pocket just collapsing again on the freshman. You know, Arch did a really nice job early in the game. Defense just moved down the field and I think that's something that can never be undervalued from the quarterback position extremely important oh. the fake handoff by Joe Tatum sophomore from Los Angeles what I can do right here with a little zone read action look at him confusing the cameraman and everybody getting out there rolling I wish he would have gotten the end zone hey, see if they get one more playoff but Alex this is Joe Tatum time this is, okay this is his one shining moment and that will do it for the orange and white spring game the white squad led by Quinn Ewers takes it 21 to 10